Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. My mother had a terrible childhood. She was abandoned by her parents. She was rejected by her grandparents. She was literally working as a housemaid at the age of 14. And she told me every day, you've got to get up and fight for what you believe in, no matter how hard it is. And I think about her a lot. I miss her a lot. I wish she were here with me. And I remember that. I don't want to just fight for me. I don't, I mean, I can have a perfectly fine life not being president. I'm going to fight for all the people like my mother who need somebody in their corner. And they need a leader who cares about them again. So that's what I'm going to try to do. She wrecked the world and now she's crying about her deceased mother. Welcome to the Savage Nation. And the stooge at ABC doesn't ask her one question about, are you embarrassed by the fact that your Arab, Arab Spring policy has destroyed the Middle East and has caused this humanitarian crisis? Not one word. So we're focused now on Hillary Clinton. Did she sell or not sell? That's not the point. The stooges at ABC didn't ask her the real questions. That's the point. She also gave a, a sop, a throw at the Israel crowd to show that she's with the Jews. Listen to the next one. Israel has every reason to be alarmed by a regime that both denies its existence and seeks its destruction. I would but. not support this agreement for one second if no. I thought it put Israel in greater danger. I believe in my core that Israel and America must stand side by side and oh, come I, was, on. I will always stand by Israel's right to defend itself as I always have. Yeah, all right, sure. Yeah, I yeah, believe heard this deal before. and a joint All right, yeah, all right, turn it off right, right. She, she would she wouldn't support it for a minute if she thought it put Israel in danger. Oh, not for a minute. Everyone who studied it knows it puts Israel in danger. In fact, the chief liar the raghead over there in Iran said, death to Israel. Israel won't exist in 25 years. I guess Hillary didn't read the morning papers. Okay, but this is the story. They get $150 billion, a pathway to a nuclear weapon, the right to develop missiles, and we didn't even get one hostage released. How's that for a negotiation, Hillary? How is that for negotiation, Hillary? So we need, we need to talk about these things today. And I have to ask you a really hard question. Is Israel the real problem? And I'll ask you a harder question on the Savage Nation, which will not be picked up by anyone in the media, but you, the listeners, listen for a reason. Should the U.S. continue to support Israel? Why or why not? I mean, that's the core of the question. Because the left, the left, I mean, under Obama, Obama's worldview is that Israel has fundamentally become the Cuba of Russia. Did, did, I don't know if you understand that. Israel is America's Cuba, a Cold War relic. That we supported it after World War II because of what happened in the Holocaust. And that was fine, and that was that time. But the world has changed. The Jewish people are not as influential as they once were. The money is where the uh, Muslims are. There are more numerous Muslims than Jews. And given that there's no conscience, or shall I say character in a man like Obama and his pack of uh, jackals, they go where the power and money is, so they've aligned themselves with the Arabs and the Muslim power. And they think that uh, Israel's an expendable issue. But I ask those of you out there who think that Israel is the primary issue to ask yourself one question. Attention anti-Zionists. What about all the other conflicts on the earth between Muslims and their neighbors? Do you know of them? You haven't read about them in the New York Times, like Kashmir, where Muslims have been fighting India, or the Muslim problem in the belly of China, or the Muslim problem with Russia, or the ongoing Muslim slaughter amongst the Moros in the Philippines? How come you don't know about those issues? So many of you would say, oh, well, you know, if you gave the, 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 Israel to the Arabs, the world would be at peace. That's because you're ignorant of history, just as you are of ignorant of American politics. But I want to go now to the history of the Jewish people, because many of you don't even understand what this is about. 
And you say, oh, who cares about Israel? It's just a little nation in the middle of all that. Give the Muslims what they want and the world will be at peace. We can party on, take our drugs and have drug sex and rock and roll forever. So who are the Jews? Where do they come from? Well, they were once called Hebrews. We know that the Jewish people are Semitic. And they were not that important, by the way, in the, in the ancient times. The importance of the Jewish people appeared in the latter history of the world. We know for sure they were settled in Judea long before 1000 BC. And their capital city after that settlement was Jerusalem. We also know that the history of the Jewish people is interwoven with that of the great empires on either side of them. Egypt to the south, and then the moving, changing, shifting sands known as the empires of Syria, Assyria, and Babylon to the north. And why are the Jews so important in the world today? It's because that the ancient Jewish people produced a written literature, a world history, a collection of laws, chronicles, psalms, books of wisdom, poetry and fiction, and political utterances, which became known amongst Christians as the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. The atheists consider this to be sheer literature. The Jewish people consider it to be the word of God. All we know for sure is that this literature appeared in history in the fourth or fifth century BC. Fourth or fifth century BC. Consider it what I just said or consider it the word of God. What it is a collection of literature, world history, laws, chronicles, psalms, books of wisdom, poetry and fiction, political utterances, all in the Old Testament, which I, I read somewhat on the Savage Nation. And the Christian Bible is based, as you know, upon this Bible, the Old Testament. The Quran is based largely upon the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament. Almost all of the laws that Muslims follow are based upon the Old Testament. They're almost identical. And where did this literature come from? Well, I, whether it's from God himself or from the prophets or how I just say writers, all we know is that this collection of literature was put together first in Babylon. And I'm not going to go into the history of Babylon and what happened in Babylon. I'm not going to talk about Cyrus, who he was and how he took Babylon in 538 B.C. And Cyrus released the Jews from bondage in Babylon because the Jewish people had been sent there. Jerusalem had been sacked and burned and the remnant of the Jewish people was carried off as captives to Babylon. And they stayed there as captives in Babylon until Cyrus took Babylon in 538 BC and he released all of the Jews and he sent them back to resettle their country and rebuild the walls and temple of Jerusalem. And then suddenly the civilization of the Jewish people began. At that time, by the way, the Bible of the Jewish people consisted only of the first five books of the Old Testament as we know it. Five books of the Old Testament. And what's interesting about that is that when you look at the African tribe that claims to have been Jewish, that they, were, that they, are, that they are Jewish, they only follow the first five books of Moses, these five books. Did you know that? Do you know about those people, the black Africans, who were resettled in Israel in the 19, I don't know when, when it was, but they were picked up whole and they were saved from Africa and brought to Israel. They make among some of the finest soldiers in Israel, by the way, from those people. But they only respect the first five books of Moses, the Old Testament as we know it. Now we in the West have the fantasies of the creation of the world, of Adam and Eve, the flood. That's how the Bible begins. Now, it's possible these things happened. Possible there was a flood. I mean, there was, could have been global warming then, caused by the foul gases emitted by camels, which immediately and suddenly shrank all the glaciers and caused the flood. We don't know. We have to go to an expert on this, such as the Pope or Al Gore or Barack Obama, they would know the truth of this because they have access to scientific instrumentation that we, the ordinary people, don't know about. So it could be the gases of the camels and the donkeys in the Old Testament time were so hot that they suddenly melted the, the northern uh, ice cap and we had the flood, Noah's flood. 
But in the ancient books, there was the stories of Moses, Samson. But what you don't know about the stories of Moses and Samson is that they're not original. They were ripoffs because there were Sumerian and Babylonian parallels. I mean, I have to tell you that as a writer and as a, t a talk show host, you have to understand that ideas are somewhat shared. You may think that Samson and Moses were original to the Jewish people, but nah, not really. They were part of the legends of the Semitic peoples in that time, and they, they have Sumerian and Babylonian parallels. Then there was Abraham, probably lived as early as the days of Hammurabi in Babylon. Abraham was a Semitic nomad, very much like a Bedouin. He was the patriarch. And then you have to go back to the story of his wanderings and the stories of his sons and grandchildren and how they became captive in the land of Egypt. We know that Abraham traveled through Canaan and the God of Abraham says the Bible story promised this land of prosperous cities to him and to his children only. And finally, after a long sojourn in Egypt and after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness under the leadership of Moses, the children of Abraham now... Uh, comprising of 12 tribes, invaded the land of Canaan from the Arabian deserts to the east. This uh, likely occurred between 1600 B.C. and 1300 B.C. By the way, there are no Egyptian records of Moses nor of Canaan at this time. But this invasion did not succeed in conquering any more than the hilly backgrounds of the Promised Land. The coast of the ancient Israelites was now in the hands not of the Canaanites, but of newcomers, the Aegean peoples, the Philistines. And they had cities such as Gaza, Gath, Ashdod, Ascalon, and Joppa, Jaffa. And they withstood the Hebrew attack. And for many generations, the children of Abraham remained unknown, rather obscure, living in the hilly backcountry, engaged in bickerings with the Philistines and with the kindred tribes about them, the Moabites and the Midianites and, and others. You can read it yourself. You can read it in the book of Judges, a record of their struggles and disasters during this period. It's a record of disasters and failures entirely. You can read it for yourself. Now, you want me to go on with this? You want me to jump to the Hillary and the Dillery and the rally in Washington and Israel? And the, I think I'm going to continue what I'm doing. I'm going to do it in my own way, in my own time, my own cadence. I'm not going to mention Obama. I'm not going to mention Trump. I'm not going to mention Hillary. I, I'm so tired of them. They're only people. I just can't take it anymore. I, I Sometimes I have to just go back to history to find out where we are today because there's a saying that's true. Those who do not know their past are condemned to repeat it was written a different way, which is those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. <clears throat> the Spanish philosopher Santayana wrote that. But I've written it another way, which is that in order to go forward, we need to look, we need to look backward. Michael Savage wrote that. It won't, it won't wind up on Breitbart because just like the other websites that have banned me but listen to the show religiously and take ideas from me, it doesn't matter to me. I am the Moses of radio. I have, my own lead, I have my own followers. I don't need the world to, to listen to the show. I need you, the listeners, to listen to the show. And it's to you who I address the story of the Jews, the early history of the Jews, because we have to ask this question. It's all about Iran now, isn't it? Iran says they will wipe Israel off the map as soon as Obama gives them the $150 billion pathway to a nuclear weapon and missiles. They're, not, they're very clear about it. We know who Obama is. Obama is a sympathetic Muslim. It doesn't matter whether he actually gets on a prayer rug to me, because there are Muslims who oppose Iran. There are Muslims who oppose ISIS. Unfortunately, our president is not with them. Our president doesn't seem to like Jordan and Egypt very much. He seems to love Iran. He seems to be in love with the mullahs who want to take Israel off the map. And so whether or not this little history of the Jews is important to you, it's very important to the story I'm about to tell you and where we end up at the end of the day right here on the Savage Nation. So please be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance.